This video gives some examples of applying the Nyquist stability criteria to systems with integrators. So the previous video gave a number of examples of the Nyquist stability criteria but for systems without integrators and therefore the computation of encirclements was straightforward. This video is going to give some examples where we include integrators and where perhaps the implementation of Nyquist is not quite so straightforward. Later on, the videos will begin to focus on how we use these insights for design. So first, a reminder of the background. We're going to define NO as the number of open loop right half plane poles. NC is the number of closed loop right half plane poles. And NQ is the number of clockwise encirclements of the minus one point by the Nyquist diagram. Once you've got those three definitions, basically the Nyquist stability criteria says that this formula must hold NQ plus NO equals NC. So the inference is from this. If <coughs> the system is open loop stable, which means that NO is naught, then your closed loop stable, if and only if, the Nyquist diagram has no encirclements of the minus one point. Now, uh, viewers are reminded that when you're counting uh, open loop poles, integrators are considered as left half plane. If the system is open loop unstable, then cl it's closed loop stable only if the Nyquist diagram has NO counterclockwise encirclements of the minus one point. So these two sentences basically are an interpretation of this uh, formula. Now, a reminder of how we might do Nyquist diagrams with integrators. The key things you need to be wary of are what happens as omega tends to zero, because then the modulus of g of g omega is going to tend to infinity. Well, at this point, the decontour has got two right-hand right-angle turns, and therefore your Nyquist diagram must also have two right-hand right-angle turns at the corresponding points. Now, S, or the decontour, moves through 180 degrees anti clockwise and therefore 1 over s which is what you're plotting on the Nyquist must move through 180 degrees clockwise and again with infinite gain. Just a reminder clearly if there are two integrators in a system then you're going to get a 360 degrees because you get 180 degrees for each integrator. Let's move to the examples then. So we're going to apply the Nyquist stability criteria to several examples and hopefully by the end it will be clear how you do it. Example 1 then. Q equals 3 over S times S squared plus 2S plus 2. Well step 1, as ever, is to complete the Nyquist diagram. So we've got to add our mirror image and then add our right hand turn. So first put the arrows the direction of increasing frequency and that way you'll make sure that you get your right hand turns the right way. Do your 180 degree rotation at infinity, so it's a clockwise rotation, and you'll see that's what we've done there. And now we want to ask ourselves, how many times has this diagram encircled the minus one point? Well, actually the minus one point's here, slightly here off Q. And what you'll see is clearly NQ equals zero. Now, for this particular system, we've already got NO equals 0. So if we then compute NC using this formula, we're going to get NC equals 0. So the system is closed loop stable. Second example, G equals 5 of S, S plus 1 squared. So again, the first step is to complete the Nyquist diagram. So put in our direction of flow, add our right hand right angle turns, do our 180 degree clockwise rotation, next right hand turn, and in we come. So now, how many encirclements have we got of minus one? Well, hopefully it's clear to you, you've got one encirclement in here, and you've got another encirclement round here, so therefore NQ equals two. For this system, again, you had NO equals zero, so NC must equal two. So in this particular system, you can see you're going to have two closed loop right half plane poles and you're going to be closed loop unstable. Now, this example here is to illustrate what happens if you change the zero. You'll see both systems have got the same pole polynomial, but we've changed the zero factor. 
s plus 0.1, s plus 10. So if I do the top one first, s plus 0.1, and that's this green plot. So again, if we do the normal trick, which is complete the plot by adding the right-hand turns, and then doing your part at infinity, how many encirclements do you get? Well, it's fairly clear that for this green one, you get no encirclements. What about this blue plot, where you had a zero in a slightly different position? Again, add my right-hand turns, do my part at infinity, next right-hand turn, and what do you see? Well, if you follow this in, you'll notice that the blue one gives you, essentially, two encirclements, nq equals two. So what do you find? This system here is closed loop, unstable because it gives you two encirclements, you're going to have two right half plane closed loop poles, whereas this system here is closed loop stable. And what does that tell you? It tells you that the position of the zero is critical. Now you could verify this with the root loci plot, and I will leave that to you do in your own time. Next example, and this example, what we want to do is investigate the impact of changing this value k on the result we get. So the Nyquist diagram given is for k equals 1. So first let's complete this diagram as ever. So add our right hand turn, do our 180 degrees at infinity, next right hand turn. And if you notice the axis down here, you'll see it's fairly clear that nq equals 0. We've got no equals 0, so nc equals 0. So for small values of k, the system is clearly closed loop stable. What happens if I was to increase k a bit? So let's try something like, I'll use red, let's try k equals 5. Well that means I'm essentially going to multiply this point by 5, which takes it to about here, so you're going to get a sketch that does something like this. But again, you'll be fairly clear that you're still going to get nq equals 0. <laughs> Now, in order to change the number of encirclements, I need this intercept point to be to the left of minus 1. Now, minus 1 is obviously off the window here, but if I can move that intercept point to the left of minus 1, then I'm going to get 2 encirclements, and I'll go closed loop unstable. And the value of k required is going to be something a bit bigger than 10. So let's go to MATLAB and see if we can verify this. So I'm going to CISO tool because I've entered this system on CISO tool so we can investigate what happens. So here we go, you'll see I've got k equals 1. See, there's my nominal Nyquist plot, closed loop stable, everything hunky-dory. What happens if I increase the gain up to 5? And what you begin to see is the plot is getting a bit nearer to minus 1. You'll see this yellow plot here. The systems are beginning to get oscillatory, but I've still got no encirclements. I'm still stable. Let's try go to 10. <coughs> At 10, you see I'm now getting very close to the minus 1 point, and I'm beginning to get lots of oscillation, but again, still no encirclements. I'm still stable. What happens if I go to something like 15? And now you see I've gone around the minus one point, only just. So I've now got two encirclements, two right half plane poles, and the system is closed loop unstable. And indeed, if you look at this root loci up in the top left, you'll see those poles have just moved into the right half plane. I can indeed make C a bit bigger, make it obvious. If I do something like 30, it will now become crystal clear that I've got the encirclements and the poles have moved into the right half plane. Now, what's different about this example? What you will see is that we've given the system two integrators, not just one integrator, but still, there's no open loop right half plane poles. I'm still looking for no encirclements. First job is to complete my Nyquist diagram. So if I add my right hand turns, you'll see that gives me this. And because I've got two integrators, I'm expecting to do 360 degree rotation before I come back and join that bit with another right-hand turn. So how many encirclements have we got here? Well, I hope it's obvious to you we've got nq equals 2, and that's going to imply that 
that NC equals 2. Now, of course, the next question is, can I change the number of encirclements? Well, the key thing here is there is no intercept all right, with negative real axis. So you can't change the number of encirclements by changing the gain. So therefore, your closed loop unstable for all k greater than 0. That's what Nyquist is telling you. Now, what we recommend is go to MATLAB, have a look at your root loci, and say, am I getting the same insight? Have I made a silly mistake, or have I really got this? So that's what we'll do next. We'll go to MATLAB. There we go. And we're going to enter the system. There it is. And having entered the system, we'll do the root locus plot. And we'll just find that down here. There it is. And what do you see on this root locus plot? You see the two poles are always in the right half plane for all positive values of k. So the root loci has told you the same thing that you got from Nyquist. <laughs> Next example. Again, you'll see we've chosen the example with two integrators, but it's got a slightly different Nyquist diagram. So as ever, let's add in our right-hand turns and complete our plot. So we get our 360 degrees, and then our right-hand turns. Make the minus 1 crystal clear. So how many encirclements have we got now? Well, again, it should be obvious. The minus 1 point is outside, so nq equals 0, and that tells me nc equals 0, and Moreover, this is for all k greater than 0. Again, you can see there's no intercept right, on negative real axis. So therefore, I cannot change the number of encirclements by changing the value of gain. And therefore, this system will be closed-loop stable for all positive values of k. And again, what I would say is I'm not going to do it Go and check this out with MATLAB and see if that is indeed the case. So final example. In this one, we've added a right half plane open loop pole. You see we've got S and S minus 1. So now we've got NO equals 1 for that single right half plane pole. So as always, let's start by completing our Nyquist diagram. So I add my right angle there. I add my clockwise rotation of 180 degrees. OK, join with another right angle. Now, how many encirclements have I got? Well, what you'll see is I've got NQ equals 1. This is clearly a clockwise encirclement. You see that from the direction of the arrows. I've gone round minus 1 in a clockwise direction. That gives me NQ equals 1. I've got NO equals 1. And so therefore, NQ plus NO gives me 2, which means I've got two right half plane closed loop poles. So I'm closed loop unstable. Now, can I do anything about this? Well, fortunately, in this case, you can see there is indeed an intercept on the negative real axis. So what I could do is I could scale up this Nyquist diagram. So let me just scale it up a bit like this. Scale it up a bit like this. And what's going to happen when you do that? Well, what you'll see is you've now got an anti-clockwise encirclement of minus 1. NQ has become minus 1, and therefore NQ plus NO is now 0. So if you increase the gain beyond about 2, you'll get a counterclockwise encirclement, and the system will become closed-loop stable. So let's try this on MATLAB and see if it works. So here's the system down here. And let's look at the root loci and see what the root loci tells us. And what do you see? You see for small values of k, you've got two poles in the right half plane. If I make it a bit bigger in case you can't see, you can see over here two poles in the right half plane for small values of k. As k increases, the poles move into the left half plane and you become closed loop stable. So the root loci has told you the same thing that the Nyquist has told you. 
So some conclusions. We've given a number of numerical examples of applying the Nyquist stability criteria to open loop systems with integrators. We've emphasized that it's important to place the right hand right angle turns correctly. Make sure you get the direction of increasing frequency marked first and also to include the 180 degree clockwise rotation at infinity for each integrator. You can also use tools like root loci to check or reinforce your findings and indeed you encourage to use tools like MATLAB to check your work as well because with MATLAB you can also write your own questions, try and find the answers and use MATLAB to check.